Let's talk a little bit on how we would repair surgically this Bankart lesion. This is an arthroscopic procedure that does the following. Let's just look at that torn labrum. Okay, so again, bony socket, shoulder blade, the labrum, the middle of the socket, again, the labrum in three dimension, and the tear now is down here. The tear being right here, where the labrum is pulled off the bone. How are we going to get this to heal? Well, we have to sew it together. What do we use to sew it together? Well, we use this very tiny screw. It's actually less than the size of the tip of this pen, but I'm going to draw it big so you just understand it. Well, screw's got a head, it's got the shaft, and then it's got the threads. On this type of screw, there are stitches attached to the head. And I should mention that these screws also are what we call bioabsorbable, and that is after a number of months, the body reabsorbs them. We take this screw, we place it into the bone, so we're placing it into the bone, so we're just seeing as the screw went in, the head of the screw, and then we have the stitches that are protruding from them, and we pass those stitches around the labrum, and secure the labrum tear so that it heals. And we'll often put two and often three of these screws to hold and repair that labrum. So that's the repair of a Bankart lesion or a Bankart repair. And this is called a anchor screw because it allows us to anchor these tissues back to the bone. Our patient uh, is a 27 year old uh, male who uh, injured himself um, at work when he was lifting a heavy object and he literally dislocated his shoulder. This fellow has had um, cro some chronic instability. You can tell this, what's happened is his ligament has peeled off and retracted against the glenoid about, oh, a good centimeter or more, uh, which is a half an inch. And that's indicative of some um, chronic instability. That's not just an acute, whereas like, if this had been say a, a wrestler that tore the labrum or a football player that dislocated his shoulder and had a fresh tear, this would be a lot, lot uh, less fibrotic. This tissue would be um, sitting here like off the bone, but along this edge and not retracted up into the uh, uh, medial to the glenoid. Pretty good. Well, that's getting there. We're definitely moving that in the right direction. This is a uh, suture. So that's our, we're passing our suture. This is a, not the suture we're gonna tie with, this is a suture that we are going to pass with. Good. And we're going to put our suture through this, and that's going to be the suture we're going to use to tie. Now we are going to feed that through the loop now. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's what we're doing. That's our cinch now. Okay, now we're going to put our implant in, which is a little bony implant made of uh, material that dissolves. We want to be above our repair stitch, but not too low because we're going to probably put a second anchor in. So here we are, uh, right on the edge of the glenoid. 
We can even cheat up a little if we want. Mallet. And now we're going to drill a little, little tiny socket. Now we tension this. And this is the uh, critical part here, because we are just about to tie this down, but we want to pull our suture up. This is a little, see how that's coming closer? See how that's cinching in? That's why they call it a cinch lock, and I can control that tension beautifully. And that, you're looking for that pleated tissue there. And I'm just about to set my implant tension. I'm holding the suture in one hand and putting the implant up, and I'm about to now put that implant in. This fellow has good bone. Textbook, gang, textbook. Again, we're doing this through three little holes, so and it's really a nice repair. You want to see that tension of that ligament. That's really good. And now Reese is going to, going to cut these sutures for me. I'll protect the rest of the repair of site. It's going to come in over that and just cut them flush. I'll back up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And what that, there's no suture knots, nothing. Knotless anchors, knotless repairs. Very, very, um, are less dangerous to causing arthritis in the shoulder. And now we're going to put our implant in. What do you think? About right yeah, there, huh? Right there, yeah. And we'll cut that. And that's the second stitch in. So you can see we've really stable. I mean, look how we can't, there's no drive through sign anymore. We've definitely helped this fellow. If we did not, didn't do another thing, he's pretty, he's definitely a lot more stable than he was. Ready? We'll immobilize him in a sling for six weeks, but he'll start some therapy and start some gentle motion. You have symptoms where you feel like your shoulder's unstable. It's getting out, it's catching, it's locking, or it's changing in positions, or you feel like a giving way sensation. That usually means you are having some shoulder instability, and you should be seen you know, by an orthopedic surgeon that uses arthroscopic technique to um, uh, stabilize the shoulder. And we're going to tie this suture knot down, and that should do it for his repair. It's much less painful, minimally invasive, leads less scarring, and I think that our results are very comparable, if not better, than the open procedures.